Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Uh, welcome you all to this uh, lecture. The next lecture, basically, in the on the topic of uh, this mass bias spectroscopy, in this particular course on uh, analytical spectral and microscopy applications of inorganic compounds and nanomaterials. In the couple of previous classes that we have looked at the basic principles of the mass bias spectroscopy, we also have just looked at some examples uh, also. There are three parameters mainly you play with it. One is the isomer shift or chemical shift and quadrupole coupling, then doing this mass spectrum under the magnetic field, so magnetic field interactions. So these are the three things that you use and identify uh, the compound or material or composite. In terms of the constituent uh, components, and that is where in this case the mass by nuclei, particularly we were looking at the ion case. Now let us look at, uh, in the previous uh, class we have looked at the example of uh, this uh, phenanthrylin bis iron compound uh, with the NCS ligand and the trisphenanthrylin compound, please look at the particular slide and if you look at the trisphenanthrylin compound, the completely in low spin all through starting from room temperature till the down to the liquid helium kind of close to the temperature at all. On the other hand, in the right panel, you see that it is a bis phenanthrylin with two thiocyanate ligands, not three phenanthrylins, two phenanthrylin ligands. Okay, and now if you change the temperature from the room temperature, the room temperature you have the high spin. Please look at the slide. And as you keep going, somewhere around 180 uh, in that range, which is uh, somewhere close to that of the liquid nitrogen, you start seeing the inner doublet. So you have only the outer doublet, which is the high spin. You have the inner doublet is also coming up, which is from the low spin. And at uh, when you reach completely to the liquid uh, nitrogen temperature, which is 77K, this is completely low spin. Uh, you can see that. Okay. So that's how this uh, example, which I explained to you earlier. Let us look at some additional examples. Please have a look at the, this slide, please, again. And this is a compound of 2 amino pyridine. This is the one. So if you see that this one binding site is another binding site to the metal ion. So metal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you will have a 5 membered chelate with uh, each one of the amino methyl pyridine moiety or molecule. Okay? 3 such obviously you will get uh, a 6 coordination which is an octahedral kind of a ion complex in this. So again this is the 2 minus outside which means 2 plus so its iron is in 2 plus. So all that we are looking at is that. So in the iron 2 plus uh, at the room temperature you have a uh, the 2 the doublet which is separated by large which is shows about the high spin and as you lower the temperature to uh, the 170 you can start seeing inner the inner doublets etc you can see and you go further down 110 178 you will get. So you can see very clearly just like the way you have seen in the previous example with the bis phenanthrylin plus 2 thiocyanates. Instead, if you are looking at the 3 amino methyl pyridines because their binding strengths are different and each of this, you can go from a high spin system to a low spin system as you go from room temperature down to the liquid nitrogen kind of a temperature itself. Now, on the other hand, we can also look at in this compound, you can also do something called dilution, which is called the magnetic dilution. So, from a Magnetic compound use a diamagnetic. In a diamagnetic compound, you start using a paramagnetic. So that's how it is. Here you start with a with a paramagnetic uh, uh, kind of a, a compound, and then you dilute with the other one. So here it is not the magnetic basically dilution. It is the Mosbauer nuclear dilution. So you are looking at the ion as a Mosbauer and the zinc as the non-Mosbauer thing. So if you look at uh, 
this uh, completely the ion compound of this that you would see primarily this uh, low spin doublet with a very little of the high spin and you dilute it by 0.2 of the zinc then you start seeing these uh, outer are growing and you go to 0.6 uh, means 0.4 of zinc then more growth and you can see that uh, this is 0.8 of the zinc. So, is, of course, you cannot do the 100 percent zinc because 100 percent zinc is not active for the mass buyer. So, you cannot see that. So, you can only have 100 percent iron to 20 percent iron. So, the dilution with a non magnet non mass buyer element is somewhat similar to that of a temperature variation. Why? Because these ions get these molecules get separated in the lattice and as a result that you have this high spin low spin version of the transition kind of thing. So, you get you start getting more and more of the, the high spin uh, situation as well. So, like room temperature you have a high spin situation. So, at very low uh, uh, the content of iron more content of zinc you would again get the same. Okay. So, uh, we have looked at uh, in the previous case we have looked at one is temperature variation of the compound. Same compound you replace part of the iron by zinc and then you have seen as the greater the zinc that you have the, the uh, greater the high spin component that is coming in this. Okay. So, and uh, if you look at uh, the other example is same compound Fe 2 AMP Cl 2 that AMP is nothing but this one aminomethyl uh, pyridine which is a 5 membered you know chelate with the iron and uh, this uh, now has uh, two different experiments are shown in this particular slide. Uh, again, I uh, draw your attention to this slide. Uh, please increasing pressure. So, you have the sample and you have the room you know the atmospheric pressure and the high pressure kind of thing. So, you have the, the two spectra shown over there here. So, if you take this as the spectrum that is measured at the normal pressure ok standard pressure you can see that this blue lines uh, doublet is somewhat smaller compared to that of the red doublets. Now, if you come to this one you see this blue doublets are much greater in proportion and uh, as compared to the previous one and in par with that of the red one. So, that means by increasing the pressure what you get you get more of a low spin situation. You can see in the previous case you see that the low spin is the smaller doublet the high spin is the greater at very low temperature you get the low spin kind of thing. Similarly, you get a very high pressure again you get the low spin kind of a situation. Now, on the other hand you can also take this compound and start grinding it ok. So, the when you start grinding which is called the ball milling is one and the same and then you try to get at the product and look at the mass buyer as a function of temperature. So, you could see very similar kind of things as the uh, you have a, a big high spin kind of a doublet and at little lower temperature you get the mixture of both the high spin and the low spin and the low spin completely low spin at the lower temperatures. So, the, the ball milling kind of a effect I will show another example at a little later stage and not we will use the term ball milling but we will use the term the size of the particle in that. So, this is the same as that. So, we can look at that particular example. Now, uh, a slightly different uh, compound, but nitrogen 1. So, you can see that this one this is the binding center ok. So, this is the mono dentate as opposed to the previous examples which are bidentate and uh, so this can form a six, six ligands with the iron and the 2 plus. So, 2 minus. So, it is iron 2. So, we we'll, let us look at uh, two different experiments. One is at the temperature, other is at the at the light incident. So the temperature thing we already knew that at the room temperature or a, or a higher temperature you have a high spin. As you go down the temperature, you have the low spin system situation that you have here. So the high spin is still there even up to 150 as compared to the earlier compounds because they are the chelated compounds. These are monodentate compounds. So you have a difference in terms of their stability etcetera. So, therefore, you still get the high spin even at 150 degrees and then. So, all that what you are seeing is the temperature variations do vary whether it is a monodentate or bidentate 
chelation, non-chelation, etc. These also one need to notice uh, for the mouse buoyer changes. Okay, so you look at this particular uh, example on the right side. This is from the, the light radiation at the room temperature. You get the high spin. High spin has a, a color of this kind of a yellowish type. And then you go to the liquid nitrogen temperature and then you have seen the low, temp, low spin. The low spin has a little reddish brown kind of a thing and the yellow is. Now if you take the same and then uh, irradiate with the green light, green light, even at a 10K, you would see both the component of the high spin which is yellow patch and the brownish patch which is there as the low spin. So the high spin, low spin mixture you can see these things as a, as a light irradiation too. So we have seen the pressure, the temperature will vary, the high spin, low spin component, the pressure will vary, the ball milling will vary, the light incident will vary. So therefore you can use any one of these stimuli when you wanted to transform one spin to the other spin. Therefore these can be used in sensor kind of a applications very well. Let us look at some applications of uh, Mosbio spectroscopy to some natural systems okay uh, and uh, so natural system this is uh, the rock the most buoyer spectrum of the uh, the rock which is from the mars and then if you look at uh, this uh, basic spectrum and try to uh, this is the data the the spots the dots the dots are the main data collected and all others are other kinds of fittings so you have a fe3 plus with a light greenish and little dark green, you have the iron 2 plus, then you have a little bit of orangish, yellow orange, that is iron 2, iron 3, and then you have uh, this uh, magenta kind of a color that you have, you have a bluish, and then you have a, a reddish. So you can see different types iron 3 plus, iron 2 plus, a mixture, and uh, tetrahedral, octahedral, all these kinds of things that you can try to fit into these things. So from that, so you can get the areas and then from the area you can make a ratio also the total iron versus the iron 2 plus. So in this is around 0.8. So that means it's quite highly rich with the iron 2 plus uh, kind of a things. So you can get separately magnetite, uh, olivine, pyroxene. These are all nothing but different uh, kinds of a Oh, you know the uh, ores basically you have so all these minerals so this mineral combination so it's a kind of a composite so you have a composite in this rack a rock which has all these uh, minerals in that and mouse buyer is able to identify the ratio between each of these so what extent of the the magnetite uh, what extent of the olivine pyroxene all these can be identified from this Okay, iron, you can see in spinach uh, kind of a thing, the high spin iron 3, uh, you can make out. And uh, if you see the iron 3 plus in the rubridoxin is a 0.25, and if iron 2 plus in the rubridoxin 0.65. So roughly you have about 0.4 difference in the isomer shift. That means each shift of the iron 2 to iron 3 or iron 3 to iron 2 will make this more positive. So if you remove one iron 3 and put a one iron 2, it will shift by the positive. Now if you take the most popular ferredoxins, iron uh, 4 clusters, there are 4 irons are there. So if you take uh, 3 of them are iron 3, one of them iron 2, you will have 0 0.3, 2, 0 0.35. If you have two of the iron 3, two of the iron 2, then 0.45, and three of the, uh, one of the iron 3, three of the iron 2, 0.6, etc. So you can see roughly about 0.7 to 0.1 difference, 0.07 to 0.1 difference as you go from uh, making it uh, the all iron 3s to all iron 2s, by one by one step as 0.1 kind of thing. So this means we can identify the redox states of the iron sulfur clusters uh, in that that is what so so not only the not only the epr using the mass buyer also you can find out the what kind of an oxidation states of these things are possessing that can also be made now you can see here okay so you have the the, the for, for example the iron two iron uh, two sulfur uh, sorry uh, the four sulfur and then four iron 
4 sulfur. So, they have the difference depending upon their oxidation state, that is all we want. Now, come on to the right side panel of this particular slide, uh, please. Then you have a the two irons with both iron being iron 3, the two irons, one iron is iron 3, one is iron 2. Obviously, your spectra will be different. So, if both are iron 3, what will happen is this couple and then the s value will be 0, then there will not be any EPR. I know that this is not EPR uh, topic, but uh, there is nothing wrong in looking at it because we already looked at the EPR in the past. Okay, so, if you look at the 1 iron 3, 1 iron 2, the s is not ha or 0. So, s is half. So, that means a non zero value. So, non zero value you can see that the EPR. Now, if coming to the Mos Boyer spectrum, this MB refers to the Mos Boyer, EPR refers to the EPR spectrum. The Mos Boyer we have at two temperatures, one is at the 210, other is at the 4. Uh, this is a somewhat uh, higher temperature as compared to this one. If you look at this uh, both iron 3s, you can see more or less similar doublet, but you can only see the sharpness of the lines become much more at the room temperature. That means, there is a faster kind of an exchange as compared to this one. So, the fast exchange, you can see that fast relaxation uh, is the one. So, therefore, you become sharp and is a little broader. Now, come on to the right side panel of this where you have one iron 2 and one iron 3. Obviously, you get the mixture of both and at room at temperatures like 200 Kelvin, you get a two distinct the outer and the inner. The outer red one is the iron 2 plus the inner blue one is the iron 3 plus. You can basically find the iron 3, iron 2 in one particular spin state essentially these ones into the low spin uh, kind of a uh, states, uh, the high spin kind of a states. Now, if you go to the temperatures below uh, or close to the uh, liquid helium, you will find for iron 2 part also the both the uh, low spin high spin and iron 3 part again you will find the low spin high spin that is why you get so many multiplets. The multiplet with the red is fitted for the iron 3, the multiplet with the blue is fitted with the iron 3 plus. So, iron 2, iron 3. So, both the things have at the low temperature you have a mixture of both the iron uh, the low spin and high spin. So, you can very well establish the low spin high spin and uh, the amount of iron 2, iron 3 entire things we have seen. So, therefore, it is very well useful for all of them. So, just a while ago I mentioned to you as you change your oxidation state from 3 to 2, you, there will be increase in the positive and then also you can look at different spin states as well using the Mos Buyer. So, which will differ both in their isomer shift as well as quadrupole coupling. Combining these two, you can differentiate the all these ones. Okay? So, iron 2 in red, iron 3 in blue, so, iron 3, iron 3, 1 iron 3, 1 iron 2, both iron 2s. So, similarly for 3 iron case, similarly for 4 iron case, etcetera, etcetera, you can all see. And there is no need to mug and remember these ones. And this is also taught in the EPR spectroscopy because if the total S is 0, then EPR are silent. If the total you know, value is non zero, then EPR is expected. And sometimes EPR could become very broad if you, there is a strong pulling between them as well. Here we are talking about, I know that we are talking about the mass Boyer. So, using the uh, isomer shift followed by the uh, quadrupolar coupling, you can establish whether that particular thing is 1 oxidized, 2 oxidized, 3 oxidized, 1 reduced, 2 re iron reduced, 3 iron reduced. All these kinds of things can be established by using the whatever I have talked to you here. Now, so we have looked at uh, general examples of the coordination chemistry, then we looked at some natural types, particularly we looked at the uh, rock sample and then other kinds of things etcetera. Okay? So, then uh, let us look at some composite uh, materials also. So, the composite materials uh, for example, iron 3 Fe 3 O 4. So, Fe 3 O 4 you can make, you can make in different particle sizes and if you look at the spectrum, mass by spectrum kindly I draw your attention to this slide on the left panel, top panel you can see. 10.6 nanometer because this is identified from other methods like TEM or other method and this is from three different sizes the particles of the Fe 3 O 4 10.6, 8.6, 5.3. This is what is important for the nanochemistry. Nano science why it differ from the bulk is because of that and uh, as a result of the size of the particle even shape of the particle your activities will vary and that is what we are looking at. So, if you look at these 
there is, uh, this is the overall spectrum and the green one is for the octahedral, the red one is for the tetrahedral. And see, this is for 10.6, this is for 8.6, what is happening? The green is becoming grower, growing, uh, bigger. And if you go to 5.3, the green is becoming much, much bigger. So that means as you go from 10.6 to 5.3, which is half of its size, you are increasing the tetraoctahedral sites by maybe by double or close to that. So therefore, that means your catalytic activity, your reactivity, all these things will change because the sites of the octahedral are much more in this as compared to the tetrahedral as come when you have a smaller in size of the particle. Same information is done in the lower panel, but at a different field. This is done, the top one is done at a no external magnetic field. And the bottom one is done at the external magnetic field of 20 kilo gauss. Kg is not kilogram, it is kilo gauss. So there, you can see here again. So when you know that in the under the magnetic field, you get six lines for each type of the ion. Then you have, uh, of course, maximum uh, 12. If there are two centers, 18. If there are three centers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, 11, and 12. So this is two types of centers. And these two ten centers are one is tetrahedral side as is octahedral side again with the blue uh, with the green and the red and you can see that as you go down that is 10.6 this is bulk 10.6 size 8.6 5.3 exactly same as here and then you see that green one is growing and growing so you can find the, even from the by applying the magnetic field you can completely ratify that the uh, at the at the smaller the size the greater the this uh, octahedral sites, therefore correspondingly the reactivity. So you can have a natural composite. This is this uh, magnetic, uh, magnetotactic bacteria or magnetic particles are there in this. You can see here, please see my, uh, the cursor, you see the small beads kind of thing is put. Their alignment will design their body structure, will design the direction of movement, all those things. Both the body structure and the direction of movement are uh, manifested as a result of these small beads and these are magnetic beads. Okay? So these are called the magnetosomes that contain the magnetic crystals. So the biological phenomena of microorganisms tending to move in response to the environment magnetic characteristics is known as magnetotaxis. So this is an important part even for the both for the uh, dead species as well as the live species. This will orient the orientation of these magnets inside a magnetic particles inside. And each particle, of course, is a composite. And these uh, composite particles are the magnetic, which will decide the shape, movement, etc. Now, if you look at this under the mass boyer spectrum, you can see under, uh, of course, a particular magnetic field, uh, the value is not important at a particular constant magnetic field. You can see that these can be, you know, fit into three sets a set of A1 with the six lines, a set of A2, another six lines, a set of 2 under the C, uh, which is the iron 2, and the B, which is iron 3. So, iron 2 high spin, iron 3 high spin. Then you have Fe3O4 with this, with this uh, two types, so of A1 and A2 type. So, essentially, you have a mixture of two types of iron 3 O4 and iron 3 high spin, and some part of the iron 2 high spin. So, this is all these together is a composite that is present in this particular magnetotactic material which is present in the magnetotactic bacteria. Okay, suppose you look at some power plants, they use some cooling systems and there is some material is always uh, deposited under the bottom which we call corrosion. That corroded material you take a little bit and look at the mass bio spectrum, you can see these are all broken into different fitting into this one. So this is done under the magnetic field again, you can see and uh, this red one is a hematite, black one magnetite, the orangish or goethite, bluish marcitite, and green uh, FeOOH. And you can see the percentage. Percentage you get from the area under the peak. So you can take the area under the peak and make the thing. So this particular in the power plant, whatever is there in the co cooling system, the corrosion product is uh, maximum magnetite followed by hematite, goethite, and other things as well. So composites, these are all composite kind of thing. Even if you look at that, uh, you have a magnetic uh, line in, in uh, currency bills and the US dollar bill is shown here. And if you make this, iron 3 Fe3O for 20%, FeOOH is 80%. And this is what is 
basically used in that. You can see mass boy spectrum can be very nicely give all those. So what we have learned from all these examples we saw as the iron oxidation state is smaller and smaller, the positive more positive. Evident one is more positive as compared to iron two, as compared to iron three, as compared to iron four. Again, your spin value, but that I have not stressed much on that, so you don't need to so much worry. So, in addition, you can, in in effect, you can say that the mass buyer spectrum is dependent one on the magnetic, sorry, iron oxidation state, and the second is the magnetic state or spin state of this. So, both of these are the ones which define and derive explaining all these things. I hope you got enough of uh, the information of the Mosbauer basic principles, we go, uh, built it and, and that there are three parameters, basically what you use two parameters, one is isomer shift, other is the quadrupole coupling. Now under the magnetic field further you can do that, that is the third parameter. With these three you can get the compositions that are present even in composites, nanomaterials, regular compounds, different spin states, oxidation states together. But this is very important thing because a lot of these iron materials are used in, in magnetic sensors, etc. So, so as uh, usual, towards the end of each of the topic, I uh, used to give certain uh, you know homework kind of thing, etc. So, one of the things that uh, we can see, just I uh, stressed in this particular class, as compared to earlier classes, as you keep uh, going, uh, the uh, iron from a higher to the lower oxidation state you will go to the more positive and as you have the symmetries uh, reducing the separation between the peaks will become growing and increasing and increasing and when you have a, a little problem with fitting you can always use under the different uh, magnetic field. You can also use temperature variation I have already demonstrated with that no way that you will miss whatever the composition you have. So, you can bring the samples from any any other planet and then you can uh, you can analyze and that is what is being done it is not that uh, kind of thing so so now let us look at uh, the 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 end i always ask you to do some kind of a extended practice and uh, it's i give for an example i give some questions but you should pick up yourself and do it so using the literature mass boy data explain the effect of pressure on the spectra so these are available in the uh, mass boy data is available in the literature please go a little bit you know, you don't need to go anywhere, you sit on your computer and if you have your internet, you can get that under the spectra of the compounds Fe2CO9 and Fe3CO12 and there are some differences and there are some commonalities. You must get so differences in the chemical shift, quadrupolar coupling, even if magnetic coupling is there, all of these you should compare between the Fe2CO12 and Fe3CO, Fe2CO9 and Fe3CO12 and compare first of all fix with their spectra with their structure and then compare among themselves you sit and do that ok so similarly you can also get some data literature uh, data from the moss buyer this storage of uh, and release of the iron and you know the ferritin is the protein which is present in many higher organisms for storing the uh, the iron so just like you store your money in your bank it's a bank of the iron uh, but in bank there is a way that you store the, the way that you retrieve so that is called storage and release and those things are done by mass buyer and because when you store it is stored in the form of iron 3 with whatever the surrounding and that is affecting the chemical shift and the or isomer shift and the quadrupole coupling when you are going to release the iron 3 will turn into the iron 2 again the coordination will become a bit loose and then it comes out so, at during these stages, your iron environment is different both in the uh, oxidation state as well as the partly spin state and partly coordination state, all of these. Therefore, the mass buyer is well suited to explain the events of storage and release of the iron from the ferritin. Uh, okay. So, another example I uh, asked explicitly here, pick up mass buyer spectra for any two different ores of iron. Okay, and interpret all the features of spectra and compare those among the both. The ores most often are not a pure and they will have several different kind of minerals present in that and every mineral you can, uh, you can 
address using the ion mass buyer uh, spectroscopy and then you can assign the ratios not only oxidation states there's some kind of a coordination sphere details and the percentage of each of these all of these can be made this so i hope with this you got a feel of the how a mass buyer can be used in the inorganic chemistry in the composite materials in the biological systems of where ion enzymes i have only restricted the whole thing to ion but i said that few other nuclei where uh, additional work is done somewhat le much less than the iron but there is an, uh, some amount of work is done with the tin with the iron with the platinum these are the ones where a uh, little bit with the silver but not that much so therefore we always go with the iron kind of an example similarly one can look at it's very easy to understand those things as well thank you very much